We are called to order. Everybody's here, so we don't have to do roll call votes. Uh, motion, do I have a motion on the minutes? Motion to accept. Second that motion. Okay, so these were short minutes, so I'm like, um, okay, you're Colin Baker. Um, great. I'm so happy to make it on the I did look at it a couple of times, like, oh, that was weird about it. Yeah. yeah. I remember and that. like, all oh, condensed. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So, PR usually heats up about this time and is most active <laughs> throughout the budget season and up to um, the town meetings, deliberative, and the election day after the deliberative. So I thought it was a good idea to start talking about how, what information we're going to disseminate, different channels, what everybody's thoughts are. But uh, I guess we'll start with me. You. <laughs> it sounded like you had some thoughts. I, I think that that um <clears throat> it for me public relations is kind of just all I'm doing right now. So like between dealing with COVID emails, masking, not masking, it's really usurped my role. You know what I mean? In a lot of ways, because it's really just on, it's the way it's going to be for now. You know, it'll be all right. We'll get through this. So I think that the, the, the part that I could use a hand with is um, having this committee take an active role in recommending to the board how to promote whatever it is that we choose to do. So normally what happens is I, what always happens is I, I present a budget mm -hmm. in the uh, first week of November, and then the the board and Bud Comer at that meeting, I present what we feel we need for the schools, and then they review it and send us a litany of questions. Mm -hmm. We answer those questions at the last meeting in November, and then um, once we answer those questions, the school board meets with me and anyone at Matt and anyone else that they need to to ask questions. And then the school board adopts a budget. And then the school board sends that budget to the budget committee for review. And then Matt and I go to those meetings and explain anything that they further that they want to know. And if it goes smoothly, they will then adopt a budget that is either the same as or different. And then once one time we had to kind of meet together again and come to like an agreement, that went great. It worked really well. And most of the time it ends up being that we, we get pretty close and it's been pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it is what it is. The worst case scenario, it ends up being you all adopt a budget and then they adopt a different budget. Mm -hmm. And then the school board says, no, we don't agree with the BUDCOM. This is the budget we want. And people have to vote on on which budget they want. So it gets three. We don't want to. Oh, do so there ends up with three on the ballot. I believe so. That's right, right, Matt? Sorry, what? They end up with what happens if the BUDCOM puts forward one budget? And the board recommends a different budget, and then there's the default budget. Are there three on the warrant? No. What budget happens? Budget, it's the budget, budget, budget committee budget, budget gets pushed budget. forward. It does. It's really, yes. the budget is the budget committee. Okay. Yes. All right. So, so I thought I think I think, but the board can say that they don't. They can vote against the budget committee's budget. Right. Yes, like, they can. That's what it was. They can, they can say on the bottom, you know, right. six to two on the budget committee and zero on the board. That's, that's what it was, right? Right. Based on like. Does the school board agree with it? With the budget yeah, thing? thanks. Sorry. I've never had that happen. Yeah. We don't do it this way in Maine at all. So I've learned a lot here. It's so different. And, and so this piece, as we move forward, when once the budget's adopted, this committee's role, it would be great to have some help from you with the promotion piece, mm -hmm. promoting whatever decision it is that the board makes. Mm -hmm. And that gets complicated because you can write letters as individuals. Mm -hmm. But the board can also write a letter saying, this is what we, this is why we're doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And in the past, we've kind of gone around about, should the PR committee actively engage the board? And what would that process be? Would the board approve the letters? And some committee members said, no, I don't want to write a letter if the board has to approve it. That's too much work. And other people have felt like we should. And I'm just saying, I can use a hand with whatever y'all want to help me with. I like the idea of writing letters from the board to like to the community, to the parish, um, to kind of talk about why we think that these things are important. Like, I mean, I don't know how the other board members feel, but I would be in favor if we, as PR, committee, put something together. And, and you know, I just 
just feel like that's a good way. So people still read the Parish Town. Like they I do. know people are always saying it's so outdated, blah, 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 but people do read it. Only 14 or 15 percent of our households have school age children. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the folks that are more traditional like to read the newspaper. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we need to build their support. And that, that goes back to it. So I've got a couple of other ideas that I'll throw out. One is the, the school district sends out a flyer mm -hmm. to every household in the yeah. district. I think that's great. I'm not sure whether or not that gets read, but could you share the content of that flyer in other creative ways? Right? So can you can you um can you hand it out at sports events? Can you, can you, are, are we really engaging? I've been thinking, I've been thinking a lot about like how to, I've been thinking a lot about, cause I, I really, you, you know, I really love the kids. Like that's my favorite part of the job. And so I've been going out into the schools a ton, right? Mm -hmm. Cause I, last year was so bad with everything that I felt a little bit like I didn't see the kids enough. So like today I went to drop off the baby. Mm -hmm. Super fun to see all the kids getting drawn. I, mean, I just love it. Mm -hmm. And then I've been touring the buildings at least once a week and, and going to every school. That's how I got, like, I found out about a step that's broken. I found out about the, the boiler being, the, the burners came in and we weren't expecting them for months. We were like, yes, mm -hmm. perfect timing. We did that perfectly, right? Mm -hmm. Remember last spring, I was like, if we don't do it now, right. we're not going to make it for October. And yeah. sure enough, October 1st, those burners came in mm -hmm. a month ahead of time. So we did the, I was so proud of that and happy for our team. But, but it's those little things in the chit chatting because I was thinking like, I can't get parents to call me. I can't get them to come in. So you know what? I'm just going to go to where they are. And where they are is drop off and pick up. Mm -hmm. So I was, I don't care if I'm just yeah. out there fist bumping people and talking I to kids. Like when I got a few texts from parents going, oh, we're going to get you a little I know, and that's so bad, right? I, I want to fix that. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm just visiting. But I'm thinking from like a PR perspective, like we should be looking at this almost like, how we look at campaigning. Yeah. Getting the information out in a lot of the same avenues when we all ran. Yeah. Not like obviously we all don't need to stand out at charge towns for like, you know, 20 hours, but like no. going to libraries or other places that parents are and you know, dropping things off. Well, I wondered about sporting events like basketball games. Could you hand out little little cards just saying, hey, this is kind of what the school board budget is about? I don't want to add more. You guys are busy. Right, but I'm just trying to think of like creative ideas. Well, I think of things that we're already at. Yeah, there you go. It doesn't have to be like a, it, it's kind of, I was thinking kind of like grassroots level, like, it, it, and it's so hard because it, for me as superintendent, I can say a lot in support of what we put on a warrant because I'm kind of immune to certain electioneering mm -hmm. laws. I, I can always get guidance for what, what where the lines are for you as a group because I don't want to give any ammunition to somebody who's cranky. Mm -hmm. But I also think that it's important um, that, you know, at this point, I, I don't think that this budget is going to be a decrease. It's not going to be a huge increase, but it's not going to be a decrease. And at this point, I, if we get to the point, like I know that special ed has some needs, mm -hmm. right, that have come up, which happens. They mm -hmm. move in and out, they get identified, they change. It, it, we moved programs to Memorial that they never had before in the reorganization, and maybe has programs that they've always had, plus some other things for the younger kids. It just, we're working on it and Jody's doing a great job, but but in this community, even a 1%, like $360,000, which in, in municipal budgeting is a reduction when you consider mm -hmm. the cost of living increase, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, pretty much what I'm gonna say to people is I'm gonna try to keep it at CPI, but it will be higher than the default, which means that if it passes, it happens because people get behind it. Otherwise we just get the default. And that does us no good. It just keeps us right where we are. We're not, it, what ends up happening then is more cuts that we, we don't necessarily want to make because we have to move money in a budget that doesn't fit what we need as a district. Mm -hmm. We've tried really hard to tighten everything up so that this doesn't, if we do get a default budget, it's at least close, mm -hmm. right? One year I got the default and it was bad. Mm -hmm. And it was by 10 votes. <laughs> it, it was really sad because it, it really just set us back a year in terms of like getting all those lines straightened out and everything's fine and stuff. Um, we got the other things that we wanted, the seminary pass. So I, I very happy with that. So I think that the, the piece for me is just engaging your creativity over the next month before our next meeting to think about what clever and cool ways could you reach out to parents and, and non-parents to get right. really is the key to, because the, like the parents kind of know, you know, it, yeah, I know, I know. But parent, but if the parents have more, more tied in, they have more, um, we
ways to receive information that can sign up for right. email. They may not read the email, but they have that. Right. And that's the thing is that there's a difference between it. I've reflected deeply on am I communicating to check the box so I can sleep at night or am I communicating to be effective? I'm not communicating to check the box. I'm communicating to be effective. Like we are actively looking at software that will text parents. Mm -hmm. We have learned that the current generation of kindergarten to third grade parents mm -hmm. don't read email. They are text message hounds. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're trying to figure out how to text everybody, even if it just says, Hey everyone, my constant contact's coming out tomorrow. This is the really important part. Click here for the rest. Right. Right. You know, so they get that juicy, super important. There's a school board meeting next Wednesday on this. Right. So we, we again, it's engaging people where it's like Ross Green says, you can't change what comes through the door. Mm -hmm. People are who they are and we have to adapt to them. We can't expect them to adapt to us. Just like some folks who prefer traditional, like the newspaper, I'm not going to ask them to change and get text messages. Mm -hmm. If they want the newspaper, we'll put it in the newspaper. That's great. So the text messaging is something I'll be working on. Do you think that will be ready in time for? Depends on my focus. You know, I can try really hard. Getting information out of Alma is pretty good. Mm -hmm. So I'll talk to Gordon tomorrow. Okay. I think it'll be ready before March. Do I think it'll be ready before November? I'd like it to be, but I want it for snow days. Uh, okay. I know I'm just being practical. No, that's, no but I mean, but from from PR standpoint of what we're talking about, which is the budget, like getting the budget to pass, it sounds, it, I think that's like a really key important thing. Yes, it will be great for. Oh, I'll text um, him right now. Yeah, but um, what, are, what, I mean, what are we, um, what can we, I don't know, legally or whatever, like, what about um, if we went to like, the boosters meeting. Do we go to the boosters meeting and talk, or like, are we yeah. left in the, And do we talk on behalf of myself personally? Do I talk on behalf of the PR committee? Like, what? I think. What I are think, the rules for that? I can ask some questions because I I can't tell you that okay. I can definit definitively cite an RSA that would back up what I'm about to say. But yeah. but in practice, mm -hmm. I think that if the board authorizes you to speak on their behalf regarding the budget as a PR committee, you're fine. If you if you if the board if the if you're saying something and it also depends on the level of granular detail that you get into. Mm -hmm. So if you say to people, I I'm here to, to let you know what's going on with the budget, and these are the talking points that the board has approved, and then someone says, Well, what do you think about the fact that they didn't redo the track at the high school? I would just say it was a board decision, and this is where do you know I wouldn't get into it, is what I'm you saying. Know, I would share the I guess too, get to the granular side. I think I would feel more comfortable and I, and I might be more inclined to talking as myself personally. I think people know mm -hmm. me as being on the board, but I think I would be more effective to be like, hey, I'm in here and I'm transmitting with you. I'm not talking, I'm not watering down what I'm saying because this is what I'm sure when it comes down to it, we're not all going to agree with every single little thing, right? Maybe right. we come to a general consensus, but some of the little things we don't. So I think I, I might be more effective that way. I'm also not really good at granular details personally. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not into that type of thing. I'm more of a overall give you the gist of it type of a thing. So I mean, if I just went as a parent, I mean, I'd be willing to do something like that. I'm not sure what they have at the middle or high school. I think the hardest thing about this is, and this is hard for PR for all boards. You you can you you it's such a weird thing that you have the right to free speech and to be a parent, mm -hmm. but you, it, you're kind of always a board member. Because mm -hmm. even if you're not speaking for the board, you Which can- you're not, you're not actually not allowed to speak for the board as right. an individual. Right, unless the board authorized it, which is why I said that before, right? It would have to be, it would have to be done with like talking points, like a presentation that was approved by the board for okay. people to bring to the PTO. Right, so that it's a it's a very clear. Yeah, I feel like that might be a little bit too formal. Yeah, I feel yeah. like it's like you want my raw opinion that I really think, and it's not been. And maybe that's just me, but I want to know if I, if I'm gonna come in, I don't really want to freeze at a PTO meeting. I just kind of want to be like, hey, we're all a bunch of parents here. Like, let's. Let's See, get the real inside of the school. used to do that. Right. So like years yeah. ago, like Mr. Manrell used to come in and just like, he didn't go one way or the other. He would just say, like, Tell you what it is. This is what the school board, this is the budget, that this is That's the, the way we should go. Let's like, have them do it. So the principals did it at all the meetings. And 
and it was just so it would be the it was Mr. Bender, we just always say like this is what the warrant articles are, this is what is going on, you know, please come support your teachers and you know your school. And like, but he never got like it never got to that point where it was political, it was really very factual and very like this is what the board approved, this is what the budget committee approved, this is what the warrant articles are, and this is how it will positively or negatively affect memorial. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's a real good neutral way of like principle. I think it's great because then it takes the, because like, you know, people are going to ask you privately, mm -hmm. well, what do you really think about this? And you just want to be careful because it, it, uh, there are things that happen that I don't agree with, mm -hmm. right? And, and no one is ever going to get everything they want in a municipal process. It just, mm -hmm. it can't happen. So I think that, that the, what I usually say to people is we talked about it at length and this is the conclusion that we came to. Right. I don't, I, and well, what do you really think? I, I really can't discuss that. It's right. not, I'm a member of that team and I support the team. Right. And that's right. what good teamwork is all about. Right. So I think having the language when you get into those hot moments mm -hmm. is really important. Right, because they happen, and to not talk about them is a disservice to us, mm -hmm. because they're going to happen. I've had it happen. Oh yeah, yeah, and then and then and then people can get nasty. Mm -hmm. They can say, "Oh well, you know, you're an Ambrose's back pocket, or you're this, that, and the other. Or you're not." I mean, I know what happens. I'm not. It, it it's, it happens everywhere. It's the same stuff. We know we're trained to deal with it, and the way that we deal with it is we say, "You elected me to represent our community and our children." And that's what I'm doing. And if you want more information, watch the meetings or come to the meetings. And then you can see the discussion and the votes and what happened. Mm -hmm. Right. What about, um, and I know COVID really put an end to this. You used to do like the parent coffee meetings. Mm -hmm. um, I thought those were really good. Yeah, I want to start those if again. If you for did sure. one, and I think maybe it would be helpful if you did one like mm -hmm. in the morning, like you're doing, and then maybe, and I'm not saying you do this on a regular basis, but maybe do one in the afternoon or the evening or just for the people who can't make it in the morning i think that's helpful and the other thing that you've done that i think is really good is um those videos that you've made where you yes i'll make one them. yep because you're still gonna you're only gonna get a handful of people who are actually going to come in and listen to what you have to say mm -hmm. but i think that those videos that you've made are down and dirty. Here's a good explanation of what what we're trying to do. Yep, so I, I, I do thanks. think that was really helpful. That's a, that, and I will. I'll be making those forever. I've even been pushing the principals to make them. And right. It's really videos work because people right. take a minute and watch it, and I can them. text it to people. Well, people loved all the videos that Brian made to get prepared mm -hmm. for COVID and really wished that the other schools had done. I know. I got that feedback. Yeah, I did. Brian was really comfortable doing that. Is there a way that you could, um, and I'm putting this on you and I don't, I don't mean to be, no, maybe okay. this could be something else, but so the parent and coffee and jumping on that, off of that, um, is there a way of getting into like, um, you know, because we have a couple of 55 plus communities. communities in here are all American, like, is there something where you could go and, and talk with them or, you know, somebody, if we approve or whatever, like, because if there's this, I guess if we're only hitting 14% of the community with schools that like to have kids in school, what about the rest, whatever, the 86%, what's a good way to get to those people? Not that they all live there. Um, we've, done the, we've done the senior citizens brunches yeah. at the church to reach out to people. Oh, yeah. So I'll go there and talk to them. Okay. Um, I'm a little nervous about going door to door. And... Um, I don't know that I have the time. Right. But we have to figure that maybe out. Maybe not door worth, to door. The but question is, how do you like, reach out to those folks? Maybe just like in a in a circle, like you know, I, I'm gonna guess at the 55 plus community, they have a community center or something like yeah. that. I think um when people meet you in, in person, they realize you're very I think it's a lot easier to realize that you're a down to earth person and very approachable. And I think one of the things is I think people have a hard time really getting that when you say call me you mean that yeah 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 i don't think yeah. people really they don't they don't know anything but and i tell that to people like he really needs that mm -hmm. call him he's not he's not blowing you off so um 
And I mean, and I, so I don't know how we plan that situation. Well, the question, those are just some of the things that yeah. I think that you've done that have been successful. Thank you. And I have tried evening parent coffees and they failed miserably. What about an afternoon one? We could try an afternoon one. Where, because almost for me personally, like this meeting time is easier for me than a later meeting time when we meet at 3.30 sometimes because I'm not into my afternoon, acti like my evening right. activities. Right. So I think no matter what you're going to get, Parents that are work or can't work, but I wonder if maybe some parents would be like, the 8 30 Friday morning seem to work really well. We did get a lot of people. That was the most yep. attended, like the most just, attended. We had that. 20 people, but like on a scale that was more than we usually would get. Yep. And we do. Do we know still? Or well, we will be now. We've been kind of COVID yeah. put up. It's not a, an unwillingness, it was just a COVID thing. Yeah. Um, so we can totally do that. Remember that time we did the you and I, it was my first couple of months here, and Tammy and I, they gave me a, they, the parents asked me to do an evening meeting at open house for the middle school mm -hmm. to greet the new superintendent. Zero people came to us. We jettisoned the coffee and went out in the building and just hung out with people, remember? <laughs> and, and it worked great to yeah. do that, right? Mm -hmm. So it, 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 in like the far corner of the school gym. Yeah, yeah, they had signs and everything yeah, saying "Meet the new superintendent." <laughs> Forget it. Yeah. So if I can't even get them there at night, I don't know how I'm getting. I mean, I'm open to it. If we can actually, if you guys can drum them up and get them there, I'll be there. But I don't want to waste a night away from my family I, I, for nothing. I agree, I agree with more of the night things are not great, but I do think the breakfast, like the coffee with Tom, was really good. Okay, well, so yeah. I do, and we can do it at the gym at the high. I mean, at the cafeteria at the high school while we're in COVID. Just mm -hmm. so that it's not like in my little office, because we all used to jam into my office. And oh, that's out. right. We have a conference room over there now too, in the library. We could go there. Yeah, um, I'll work on that. My personal opinion is that the library is a little bit more cozy, warm. Yeah, if like we that. if we were able to do that, I think it's a little less um, mm -hmm. a cut, uh, commercial. I don't know the word. Intimidating, intimidating or like it's just chill. It's just more like it's more homey. Yeah, it's it is institutional. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, the cafe. It's because there was one you did in the cafeteria. I think that it was you were doing tours, and um, I think it was a very big group of people it that was. time. Yeah, and what? And I, I don't know. I can't. I could be wrong, this, but I wonder if like the sound was echoing. It's really it hard. It might have been room. harder to hear you we in had, there. We had, a big, we had a school board meeting in the cafeteria. It was when you guys were talking about the radio. Yes. Yeah, I remember. I remember that it was awful. Uh, Matt, Matt was very polite and texted me um, that the other place to reach people is the transfer station. So as we get closer to the budget, the transfer station is a, a good mm -hmm. location. He's right about that. It is. Um, all right. Well, it's almost five, and we've got a full load of policies. But this was some really good brainstorming. But part of this meeting was just to say, like, shoot me an email if you get some other ideas. Right? Let's. Let's think about how we can engage everyone we can because I now that we're coming out of COVID, I can get back to, hopefully in the next eight to ten months, get back to the real work, which is getting everyone to work together to help the kids learn. Right? That's the real work. I know budget season starts early for us, but like when does when is your like target of start date of like disseminating that information? Oh, oh great. So so well, there's, there's really, so when people ask me, like, with the budget, what, what can I do as a community member? What, I don't have a lot of time. I can't be on the board, but when can I get involved? And I always tell them three things. Um, you, you, you come to the hearing, come to the meeting when I present the budget. Go to the deliberative session and vote. Those are the three things that you can do. Those are the most important three things. And when I say that, I mean, be informed when you come to the deliberative session about what's in the budget and what's going on. And that the way you get informed is by listening to me present the reasons why we need what we need, mm -hmm. right? We do that in that joint meeting. We figured it out pretty fast that it was a lot more efficient for me to just present it all at once to both committees, get the cat out of the bag and have the conversation about whatever the problems are. And this process has run incredibly smooth for us. Mm -hmm. It really has. And, and everyone has had honest, real, sincere input. Like we, we spent two hours today working on questions that the BUDCOM have for tomorrow night. We take it seriously. We want people to have transparent answers. And those questions are about like previous spending so that that doesn't muddy up the process in the future. Mm -hmm. So they have their, you did it last year, they have the preview pictures, 
Right. I mean, preview questions and then their then their budget questions. So because if the first year we did it, we just did the budget questions and we got a bunch of old stuff in the budget questions and it slowed the process way down. So that's been really efficient. Matt's ready to go tomorrow night. Practice. We gave him feedback. He talks too fast. So just to kind of um, put a little more clarity on, on Heather's question there, the, the budget is usually finalized in December. The budget committee will have a hearing and they will present the budget. Oh, yeah, go back hearing. to, yeah. It's usually at the beginning of January mm -hmm. and then the deliberatives in February and voting, of course, is in March. So just to sort of target some dates for us to start really communicating is yeah. really once the budget, once we know what the budget is and how much agreement or not there is right. that, that no I, I really think it's going to be okay. We, we never ask for January, it. that time frame. Yeah. I mean, hardly anyone comes to the public hearing, which oh is my, really a shame. It's like crickets. Oh yeah, there. Yeah, there was maybe one person. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> well, yeah, I, think, I, think she's up, I think she was a whole bunch of Yeah, that's pretty much the audience. That's pretty much the audience last year. Of course, it was COVID. Right, but still. Um, so if you know, I think the deliberate session is a big one that people. Mm -hmm. If they're going to go that, they're not going. Yeah, yeah, but the thing is, if you don't go to the hearing or the presentation, you don't know what's in the budget. Right. And so the problem is they go to deliberative and then their friends are telling them what to do and they're not really informed. And that's where the piece about talking to me is so important. And I, I can only, I can only, heck, I built, I'm trying to build like a well that's like super inviting, right? Mm -hmm. But you're right. I understand that my job comes with baggage just because of the title. Mm -hmm. And I can only work so hard to break down those walls, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and the videos are a really cool strategy that we do think works. Right. And, and that mm -hmm. Brian and I strategized about that together. Right. And he he ran with it with the COVID thing. I ran with it last year when I put out that video where I said, look, I I, I just want to talk about the facts of what we've done in the last four years with the budget or three years at that point. Mm -hmm. And and some people can look at that as defending the board or defending others, but it's not. It's just the facts. The facts are what they are. Mm -hmm. And I still have that video in those slides, so I could kind of amend that format and or just talk about what's the core in this, but I'll, I'll talk to you guys about, you'll when we get to that phase, I'll be okay. sending you like a message or a video saying, hey, did this get it? Because one time I made one and it had really bad lighting mm -hmm. and I looked horrible and Jim was like, you can't send that out. Like <laughs> you gotta fix the lamp. And sure enough, it was just the lamp. And he was like, Tom, I was worried about you. You look sick. And I'm like, oh my God, no, I'm fine. I'm just trying to get it done. Yeah. And so we changed where I sat. We got a lamp and everything and it made it way better. And, and Annie was like, oh, that's way better. Good job. So I do solicit feedback before I send those things out. And this committee primarily does that. Okay. I'm sorry. Any thought of like, when you talk about, now we talk about more specifics with video. I'm guessing there is a conflict of interest when you ask students things. But is this something that maybe the students can get involved in like trying to, Talk about the lighting. I have to imagine some of them are going to get. Oh yeah, we have some kids here. It's just like, a matter of the time. And you know, over like there. I wonder if that would be a cool project. For yeah. Them. Like, hey, you get to be the superintendent, like videographer or something. Yeah, no, it'd be really cool know. too if they did it in front of the green screen and then cut the schools in behind me oh, as I yeah. talk about them and like make it. I just try to like part of it though is that I want people to feel like that's fireside chat. Right. Hey guys, you know I'm here to help out, and it's kind of like when I make those snow day videos because I I love to see the kids post right. their pictures of what they do on their snow days, you know, and I, I like to engage the community on social media in the sense when it's positive, mm -hmm. right? It's really fun. Like kids yeah. posted some really heartwarming things mm -hmm. yeah. when that, but, but I tried to get them to do a reading challenge and they were like, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't fly. So Lego day always seems to go over well. So we'll, yeah. we'll do Lego day. Yeah. 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 All right. Great. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Then.